So I've had this article sitting on my desktop waiting for me to do a video on it for days. But as you might know, things have gotten a little bit busy in my life lately and I had to do some other stuff before I got to this video, but I am so excited about this article. <laughs> Silicon Valley is microdosing magic mushrooms to boost their careers. What is going on in Silicon Valley? Like full disclosure, we're going to discover this article together. I skimmed it. I have not read the whole thing. So we're going to take a look and see what is happening with people using hallucinogenics to boost their careers. Silicon Valley, the home of Facebook, Apple, Google, and Twitter is the embodiment of the hustle culture. It's a place filled with type A professionals all desperately competing to start the next big unicorn company that will go public, blah, 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 blah. They also desire to advance their careers against some of the smartest and most talented people in the world. I would actually argue that a lot of people in Silicon Valley lack a ton of common sense. They may have big fancy degrees, um, and I'm sure like they're very smart people, but a lot of them just are not strong in the common sense department. Um, perhaps why we find ourselves in this situation, though I don't necessarily think that people who do this sort of thing are lacking common sense necessarily, but let's keep going. Professionals in and around Silicon Valley, particularly those 35 years and older, are trying everything, including questionable fads, to appear younger than they are and which may offer an edge for their career. I don't think that this is about appearing younger, um, but we'll just see. Just because we are in a hot job, job market and strong economy, it doesn't mean that it's easy for white collar professionals to succeed at their careers. Well, yes and no. There is still pressure to ang there is still pressure, anxiety, fear of failure, and the need to stay competitive to improve themselves. We've witnessed the phases of intermittent fasting, uh, crypto therapy, long term meditation retreats in far off exotic locations, Botox, and faceless ferment. Listen, so I want to say I've done meditation retreats. I've done I've done crazy meditation retreats. I actually love, I love Dr. Joe Dispenza. Some people find him a bit culty and frankly, like his fan base is a bit culty, but his retreats are phenomenal. I've done three of his retreats now. I did, um, he was still, when he was still doing the progressive workshops, which mostly he does online now, I did that one. I did his week long retreat in Santa Fe, which was just a life changing experience. I actually, this is no joke, like sidebar, I actually had a physical healing of a chronic injury I had had for years, had been to see so many doctors, no one could help me. I really thought I was going to be suffering with this for the rest of my life. And in that week long meditation retreat, boom, eight, like I would say about 85%, 90% of it was healed. It was still, it, I still had a little bit of a problem with it, but today it is completely gone. And I credit meditation entirely to that physical healing. I've also done his advanced workshop, which is just like, I mean, you do crazy things in the advanced workshop. You basically meditate all night because they do it when melatonin levels are highest in your head, which makes it easier to kind of sink and release into meditation. So I just want to say, aside from magic mushrooms, I am a big fan of meditation retreats. I think they can just be game changing for whatever your goals are, whether they are work related or whether they are not work related. Two thumbs up. The work world is obsessed with youth for a number of reasons. Older workers earn more money and are deemed too expensive. Management believes they could easily be replaced by younger employees who will cost significantly less. With a hyper focus on social media, blah, blah, blah. Again, I just don't think this is an age thing. I And honestly, anytime I've done a retreat, whether it be around meditation or around doing things like this, which I'll probably talk about a little bit later, it hasn't been people that are, it hasn't, they haven't been people that are looking to retrieve their youth. It's been people who, you know, I think once you reach a certain age, you start to question the greater purpose a bit more. And that's what these types of things help you do. But I don't think this is a play to, to make yourself appear young and hip. That just doesn't make sense. The push to stay young and relevant is reaching a frightening level with a new emerging trend. It's reported in the BBC that people in Silicon Valley are taking magic mushrooms, an LSD type of drug. For example, $2,000 per month will get you your own psychedelic trip coach guru. <laughs> Listen, if you're going to do this stuff, you need to work with people who understand what they're doing. I don't know about this psychedelic coach guru guy, but, you know, work with shamans who know what they're doing because it's actually really important. Um, he'll guide you through your mind altering journey. Taking mushrooms is a siren song. 
luring fast-track professionals to boost their creativity and greatly enhance their work performance. I agree with that. It feels like the next level up from asking your doctor for a prescription to, of Adderall. It is so much better than a prescription to Adderall, please. And again, like I actually haven't done mushrooms. I've done other things and I'll talk about that in a little bit. White collar professionals and college students alike cite their attention deficit disorder to get a prescription drug that will elevate their adrenaline, sharpen their focus, and help people work better and faster. Steve Jobs was said to have partaken in psychedelics and playfully derided his rival Bill Gates for being unimaginative and suggested he should drop some LSD. Scott Adams, the creator of the Dilbert cartoon strip, punned it on YouTube. He actually, Scott Adams just psychoanalyzed me the other day. I actually found it fascinating to hear his perspective. So shout out to Scott Adams. I, I love it. Um, he punted on YouTube and Periscope, resident of Northern California, claims he took mushrooms once and it was the best day of his life and he no longer felt any limits to his life or career success. Yes, Scott Adams, you and I, you, you and I need to talk, man. We really do. Joe Rogan, the host of one of the most listened to podcasts and another California resident, is a big proponent of micro dosing mushrooms and has had numerous guests on his shows, ranging from scientists to MMA fighters who have shared their positive experiences from micro dosing. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration granted two psychedelics, uh, I don't know how to pronounce that, and MDMA as breakthrough designations, which permit them to be clinically researched and after showing promising potential in treating patients with mental health conditions. The research is not all positive, include a number of drawbacks. One study showed participants scored higher than usual in connectedness, creativity, focus, happiness, productiveness, and well-being. However, it didn't last long. Well, it depends on what you do with it. It didn't last long, which is counter to the argument that one dose will last long or even change your life forever. This is also, uh, there is also an increase in the trait nertosum, ner which um, where emotions become amplified. So if you feel depressed, it will make it worse for you. Eh. Okay. Proponents say that one out of a thousand will have a bad trip and could possibly end up in some long-term ramifications. That's why you need to work with shamans that know what they're doing. The fear is that you will be that one hapless person. Uh, it's still too soon to tell the light long-term benefits or detractions. This trend, like many, may fade and be replaced with a new get successful hack. So, okay. Listen, I really wish this article had provided a lot more information on why people are doing it, maybe interviewed people who've done it. But in lieu of that, I will provide you with my experience. So again, I haven't done mushrooms. I have done ayahuasca. And I've done ayahuasca on several occasions. I've also done um, San Pedro. I've also done, um, like, I've smoked DMT. Whew, the man, like, oh, Jesus Christ. The DMT was the, was the most intense thing. But um, ayahuasca is something that I, 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 I stumbled into this stuff completely by accident. I really did. I met a shaman at a coaching retreat one time, and we randomly met each other in the hall and just struck up a conversation. And he did these retreats where he would take groups of people to go to Peru to do plant medicine. So ayahuasca, San Pedro different types of things. And I said to him, and I don't even know why I said it, because I'd never done anything like this. I said, I'm going to go on one of your retreats one day. Well, lo and behold, several months later, I did go on one of his retreats. I went to Peru for a week um, with an amazing group of people, many of whom I am still in touch with today. And we spent the week doing um, different plant medicine. Again, San Pedro, ayahuasca. We did a sweat lodge. Sweat lodge. Oh my God. Oh my God. The sweat lodge was a uh, amazing. Um, I also got to go to Machu Picchu and do all these, these other things. And that was my first experience with ayahuasca. Now, my first experience with it was not strong. Some people in the group had really, really ridiculous experiences. I had a little bit, the first time I did it, like it, nothing really happened. The second night I, I got a little bit more out of it. People that I was with had much more intense stories than me. But when I came back, I felt, even though I didn't really necessarily have like a psychedelic trip that time, I felt so much, uh, so much healing from the whole thing. I mean, it was really, it, it was obvious to me that I had released a lot and I had, I had let down a lot of walls. And I'll tell you, I was actually stuck on my way back from Peru for 12 hours in uh, the Atlanta airport. And 
my sensitivity to everything around me had completely opened up. I was like, I, I was so bizarre. I ended up like basically hiding in the corner of the Delta Lounge because I couldn't even take the amount of energy that was coming at me. When I came home, my husband said to me, I mean, months later, he's my husband's not necessarily the most expressive dude in the world, but months later, he said, it was like you were two completely different people. That was the game changer. It was you going to Peru. It was like you were two completely different people. You were, you know, much more happy when you came home. You had obviously released a lot of anger, um, all this stuff. Uh, so I, I kind of took that and I, I kept with the ayahuasca ceremonies. I've done several in, out in Arizona with some of the shamans who grow peyote for the tribes out there. And some of the experiences I've had life changing is really the only way to describe it. And I think that this is, it, it's a really amazing thing to experience, regardless of whether you're using it for to get that edge at work, or just in life in general. And where I see the edge in your career coming from, is that for me, one of my experiences was, I was, I know, I'm, I'm it's gonna sound bizarre. I know, I sound crazy. But I could see how everything worked and I could see how much power I had to create whatever experience I wanted and that I could, you know, be as empowered as I wanted to be. And, you know, it, it's hard to describe in this setting, but it's just an immense feeling of peace came over me. I also truly feel that at least portions of book of my book downloaded into me on those things because when I came back, it was just like I was I was full force. It was just it was kind of flowing out of me. I I, I tell some people this. I actually wrote my book in about um, three weeks. It was I had a longer time frame to write it, but I hated the original version of it, and so I started over and I wrote the whole thing in about three weeks. And um, you know, I, I think it's exactly what it needed to be at the time, and I think part of the reason is that I got this download of information. And the same thing with the Trump article that I've now gotten so much notoriety for. As I said in the video I did yesterday, I don't think I wrote that. I think it came through me. And this is, these are the types of experiences that these types of um, things open you up to. It opens you up to a whole new level. And it opens you up to seeing people differently. Listen, I, I've gotten a lot of attention for saying that you should just be more empathetic towards people that you disagree with, that they're not evil people, they're not Nazis. And part of why I can say that now, I'll, and, and there was a time when, when even I was struggling with it, even though I had done these things, but part of why I can say that is that one of the things that you understand when you do things like this is that we're all connected. We all come from the same place. We all come from the same source. I'm you, you're me. Why would I treat you badly if I didn't feel badly about myself? Because if I'm treating you badly, that means I'm treating myself badly. That's what you start to understand in this. Now, I do agree to a certain extent that the the ramifications of doing it, it's not necessarily a, like a long-term fix. Even if you have a really life-changing experience, like I said, for, for me, the, the big one came when I did ayahuasca in, in Arizona, but also when I, I smoked DMT, like... DMT is something else, man. I, 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 I won't even try to describe it because it's, it's literally impossible. You see your life and you see this world and you see your experience here in a completely different way. And I firmly believe that all of these things can be profoundly beneficial to people when they allow themselves to open up, when they allow themselves to release this anger, when they allow themselves to fully embrace these experiences. So Maybe you aren't ready to do to do mushrooms or ayahuasca or certainly maybe not DMT just yet. Uh, but definitely, I always recommend, you know, try meditation. Just go to a meditation retreat. Even if you think you can't do it, even if you don't want to do it, even if you just really struggle with letting go. Meditation is incredibly hard. It's still hard for me. I meditate every single day. It's still hard for me. And so, of course, it's going to be hard when you're first learning it. Uh, but the benefits of it can be really, really profound. And maybe, you know, you can become comfortable. You take the next step. You try some of these other things. Again, I fully endorse it. Two thumbs up. Um, I think it's great. And I think more people are fi finding out about it. And frankly, I think the more people that do this stuff, the better place a wor the world will be. But again, I cannot emphasize this enough. Be safe 
if you're going to do this. You have to be safe. You have to take care of yourself and you have to make sure you're surrounding yourself with people that you trust to help you through the experience. Otherwise, it can go really bad really quickly. So um, find a trusted shaman or people that have done this before. Talk to other people who have worked with them to make sure it's cool, but then just let go and let yourself have the journey. And who knows what you'll discover in the process.